guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. Now in episode 15 we pretty much completed the majority of the casino square, mostly working on the Café de Paris as well and detailing the last few bits. But today we're going to move a little bit over to this area here, more of the hotel area. But not only that, but we have to fill in this huge gap here between the two roads and that's going to be a very very unique style of building. We have to pretty much build a fake area here, but um, you'll see how we get on with that a bit later on. But in this episode, episode 16, we're gonna be working on a lot of different tiered elevations. And as you can see here from Google Maps, you can see how many different areas of elevation there are now. Um, we're gonna to have to really work our socks off in this episode to accommodate that. And there's a lot of unique buildings that I'm gonna to have to try and be a bit quirky with to accommodate as well. But not only that, but we have another fantastic asset which we can bring to the workshop now this episode is released and we'll go into that bit more later on. But other than that, this episode is all about elevations, but not just elevations, we are going to be working on this fantastic hotel as well. And this hotel is called the Hotel Hermitage and it is absolutely sublime. It's another absolutely amazing hotel. And it was really, really fun to detail, and I can't wait to show you how we achieve this. But let's stop the talking and let's start the building. Let's jump in to the time lapse. So, this first section is an interesting one because it's actually where these shops are going to be underneath. And uh, if you check the um, screenshot above, you can see that these uh, fancy shops just sit nicely underneath the, um, the tier of the. Uh, the hotel gardens which is really amazing and that was one of the things that I saw um, when I started to do this and the asset we're using here is the fantastic shop faces and these are presented and made by Rick 4000 so thank you Rick for that and there will be a link in the description below where you can download this off the workshop and not only that are they fantastically visible but they are also functional shops so we will actually get some sims eventually <laughs> coming over and doing their fancy shopping in these very luxurious shop faces. And I think the workshop is lacking these sort of uh, buildings because there are a lot of buildings that you can add in underneath and make a sort of uh, apartment area, have a shopping center below it sort of thing. So I really do like these, um, these assets in, in general. So I'm hoping you'll get some benefits out of these as well. But anyway, back to the build. What we're doing here, we're trying to just get these shops the same level um, because obviously again we're working on a slope so the terrain is going to be difficult um, but luckily these shops accommodate quite well to the terrain height um, and you'll see there's a few little tricks I use as well to sort of remove that but we're now using Ronix's beautiful asphalt um, sorry grass asphalt to um, fill in the gap here so obviously the area here is not going to be functional in terms of people walking along it and enjoying these beautiful gardens but visually this is what I really wanted to achieve. I wanted to get the two tier sort of levels going here. Um, and then we're just gonna just plop in some build, uh, sorry, some plants as well and some foliage areas on top to represent the beautiful gardens that align nicely above these shops. And I also wanted to try and get the, uh, the visual look much more cleaner. So we're using these walls um, from Mac Welshman, which he created, which you would have seen in the last episode and they're now on the workshop. And these walls just look really tidy. They're just a very nice design, very sleek, very Monaco-esque. Um, so we just plop these on top and it just acts as a wall to be fair. Um, and I just like the look of them because you can then just make things look a little bit more cleaner. And actually, I actually built this on stream, believe it or not. Um, I'm actually streaming quite a bit more now. I've got a bit more time on my hands um, and I'm trying to accommodate both building Monaco and streaming to you guys at the same time because it's really nice to get your direct interactions sort of as I build but also it's a really nice way to uh, sort of push me I guess to um, build a lot more and um, this is the period of time for me personally where I've got a bit more time in my hands coming up to Christmas so I can do a lot more in terms of video footage um, and why not combine it with some streams so if you're interested guys there's a link at the bottom that shows platforms I stream on. At the moment I'm streaming both on Twitch and YouTube so if you jump into that give me a follow. Um, if you're not following on Twitch already I'd appreciate it if you do that as well. It'd be great to get some numbers up as well. 
Um, so yeah, check out those links. And there's no schedule, so to speak, of when I do stream. It's just as and when. So either follow me on there or make sure you're following me on Twitter as well because that's where I will be posting when I'm streaming. But back into the build on screen, as you can see, a bit of detailing here, a bit of foliage for um, the Hotel de Paris. And this section is near enough complete. We're now gonna be moving over to the, uh, the difficult part, is what I'm gonna call this next section um, of the episode 16. And that's pretty much contouring this big hole here, as you can see. So, as you can see on the map here, there's three main tiers that we need to complete, and there's buildings on both, just to make life more, more difficult for us. Um, so, we're gonna try our best here to replicate the buildings. Again, they're not gonna be exactly as you see them on Google Maps and in real life, but in terms of filling this area, I think the selection of buildings that we have to hand will do a very good job indeed. So the first step is to create the sort of middle tier, section um, which we're doing here with these buildings um, and using a lot of plopper asphalt here to um, to create the two tiers so like i said there's not going to be really a lot going on in this area in terms of functionality it's more of a um a physical area that we're working on to try and represent the uh the, the sort of three tiers we're working with so there's not going to be anyone moving around here we're going to put some prop cars because there is a big car park um, on both these tiers. So that's gonna be as close as it gets in terms of having actual activity, I suppose, um, on this section. But that's gonna be the case a lot in terms of Monaco. And also that's gonna help with the frames as well because we're not gonna have a lot of movement areas in this section. So it's gonna be more of a dumb area, um, which should help with the frames, which obviously we need to be very careful with when building in Monaco. Now, despite me saying that this is a very unfunctional area, we do actually use a couple of new techniques to um, accommodate this area. And we are using a lot of the roads to create the different tiers, which works out quite nicely, as you can, as you can see here. Using the, um, the pavement roads, we can adjust the um, terrain height. We could uh, move bits around. And this also helps when we're placing down props because we're not placing it onto sort of thin air, so to speak, with a layer of procedure, or, sorry, a layer of, um, probably asphalt, but we're able to actually place our props down on actual flat land, so technically working land, um, which makes life a lot easier. But also what I like about that section is it's a lot easier to work with the terrain height because you can higher and lower it very simply and also adjust the area of the road itself to make sure it fills in the gap that you want to fill in. And as you can see on camera, we're using the procedural objects mod. Yes, I know I use it a lot, but I absolutely adore it. And using the procedural objects mod, we just lowered the roof and did a few little tweaks here and there just so it fit in the area a little bit better. As it was personally, the roof itself wasn't gonna help the situation because we need to have a flat roof um, for the rest of this car park section. So it actually worked out quite nicely to be able to pretty much just take those two middle nodes and basically just drop it down a few clicks on the um, the page down button and it just worked so nice. I really was pleased with that. And again, that's one of the benefits of getting used to using the procedural object, objects mods. Obviously there are some buildings and assets that are so, so detailed and so technical in terms of what's been used to create it that there's far too many nodes for you to be able to actually accommodate and you know get to be able to move around in the way you want to. More the sim simplistic buildings are a lot easier to be able to use the procedural object mod in that way. But you'll see a bit later on, I do tackle a building that does have quite a lot of nodes and still get to create the exact um, model that I wanted at that time. But we'll look at that a bit later on.
So as you can see, we've got most of the car park area done now, and I wanted to add in a bit of detail to this wall here. And I found the um, arches on the workshop. We've already used that, as you saw a bit of earlier on, above here for the uh, the hotel decking area. And I think that looks really nice when you sort of blend it in with the uh, the lovely Monaco walls by Los Gecko. And obviously using the um, the racing track curbs as well to place down as it is in real life to sort of show off where the racetrack is. So that's really exciting. I do love having this little adjustment to be able to put in to really excel the fact that the uh, Monaco Grand Prix is here. And it just adds to the area, it just makes it more realistic because it is there in real life. And it's a, a unique feature that people recognize when they see Monaco is having those red and white curbs throughout the race course. Now next up is to detail the, uh, the decking terraced area of um, one of these restaurant areas. So what we're doing, we're using the new um, chairs from Jez from the workshop and they look superb. I really do love that and adding in some doorways here as well just adds to the, uh, the realism area um, which just brings it to life. And I know this section here isn't exactly as you see it in real life in Monaco but it still does a very good job in my opinion. From a distance and from a quick look, it just looks very nice for this area. And here we are again with the Procedure Objects mod. And what we're doing this time is I really like the look of this building. This is a um, vanilla opera house um, it suits really nicely with these other two buildings I just placed down as well but downside is is I don't like that dome so using the procedure objects as you can see there we went to a sort of a, a landscape view against it as close as possible to being exactly horizontal um, and we pretty much just select those nodes and drop them down and now using the plopable asphalt we're able to pretty much remove the fact that there once was a dome shaped roof so what I like about that is, as I said, it just removes the factor of the dome and it also takes away some of the, uh, you know, the actual aesthetics of it. I don't want it to be a, a building that stands out too much because we've already got that above it with the casino square area. So that was a, a cool little technique I thought I'd try out for this episode and it worked really, really nicely. I'm really pleased with how that came about. So now a bit of detailing now we can see the... Uh, car park area we put a few of these little other buildings around it just to sort of bring it to life um, and now we're going to add a bit of a vine area to the walls here um, a lot of the sort of stone walls in monaco do have plant and vegetation sort of accompanying it as well so you get a lot of little trees that's growing off of it um, this vine looks really nice as well and it works really well with the real life images that i was working from so that's a really cool feature to have and it's something I'm going to try and present over the rest of Monaco because it is, like I say, a common thing that tends to be involved around these stone walls.
Okay, so who's ready for some procedural objects fun? <laughs> so what I'm trying to do here is I really like the building itself and I really like the shop sort of front face um, of this with these um, arch windows. It works perfectly for the area I'm working on, but the downside is the rest of the building doesn't suit it. I literally just need these three windows. Well, this sort of a panel, I guess. Um, so as you can see here, using procedural objects, it does take a bit of time, I must admit, because trying to find the right nodes to move what part of the wall um, does become an issue at times and there's sometimes overlapping parts within that that when you move it it doesn't do what you want it to do so you can see here it does take a little bit of time to adjust to finding the perfect um, sort of node selection here but I get there eventually and the actual results are brilliant I really do like this this front wall is perfect for this area we're about to work on and the area we're about to work on is this round front to the front of the um, Hotel Hermitage. So this was the goal and this is how I created it. So if there's anyone else out there who's really getting into procedural objects, this is the sort of level you can eventually work with. And boy, does it change the whole way certain areas look. There's no way at all I would have been able to create what you're seeing on camera now without doing what I did with procedural objects. Um, so what we're doing here to start the curve off and to create a real curve because obviously these buildings well these fa these faces I guess is what they're called now are not gonna make a complete circle so having the Monaco walls down to start with and then placing these windows front panels on top you still get that curve feel because obviously the the panels we're putting down are curving with the wall but the wall itself is perfectly round so it gives you that sort of visual look that this part is actually all the way round but it's actually not so it works quite nice as a visual now i must admit this actual area here was a very challenging area it did take a lot of time and a lot of work off camera which i've obviously removed the footage of otherwise we'd probably be sitting here for about two hours but still, <laughs> what I did enjoy is getting the levels all right at first because this area here on top is where the sort of garden of the, uh, the hotel sits. So again, there's another tier elevation and I know Monaco is full of tiers and you're probably bored of me saying the word tiers because <laughs> it has been used a lot, but it really does make the, uh, the area come to life. And you'll see shortly as we get these to the right levels, we then work with again Ronix's um, proper old grass asphalts to accommodate this area. But what I wanted to do, I wanted to bring up the land value as well to a, make it also a lot easier to place down props. And also we could have got some pathways in here as well at a later time. So people can actually walk across the, uh, the hotel sort of garden grounds as well, which works really nicely. I did enjoy this section. Again, difficult to get the, uh, the levels right, especially when popping down these uh, the grass decals, but it did come to life. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you finish off the last section, you step back and have a look at it, it really does come to life. Now this section here was difficult because I could have used procedure objects to change the angle and then get the smooth slope down there. But actually looking on the map itself and using a bit of uh, foliage in terms of um, creating a well a fix for this area what we're going to end up doing is we're going to put some plants and trees there to fill in the gap because we could get all nitty gritty and sort of put the uh, procedure object based version down at a slope but it's going to be time consuming and eventually it's going to be covered with some trees anyway so we just do that we cover it with trees and Every detail knows that a tree is every detail's best friend when it comes to hiding up messy areas. So that's what we do just here. And as you can see now, the two tiers work hand in hand really, really nicely. And what we're using, we're actually using the building that we used to create the front panel to create the look of this hotel. And it's not perfect, we know that, but I really do like this look. It's a little bit more European France in terms of the buildings themselves as opposed to Monaco but I still think it works nice and I'll be uh, interested to hear your thoughts guys and what you think to this, this area, this, this particular hotel because I am really pleased with how it's come about in the end. And talking of that, that's pretty much brought us now to the end of episode 16 and boy, has it been a learning curve. I must say, every episode there is always something new that I have learnt about building in City Skylines to this degree. 
Um, and it was really fun, I must say. There was a lot of techniques now that I can take away with me to carry on the project. And hopefully a few, a few um, sort of ideas that you guys have picked up as well from watching the cinematics and uh, hearing the commentary. But that's pretty much it. Episode 16 is finished. We're going to be moving a little bit further away for episode 17. And like I said, I am now streaming a lot more. Um, and we're going to be starting work on episode 17 together. So it's going to be really fun for us to work this all out together on camera. There's going to be some stuff obviously I do off camera, but I do like having a majority of the stream dedicated to the next episode because I can get your feedback, we can work on this together um, and you know this is a community project so let's all you know have some ideas floating together and move on. But episode 17 is in the works now and we'll be starting working on the Japanese gardens so keep an eye out for that. But anyway guys if you enjoyed the video please 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 hit that like button and if you're enjoying them that much, well, don't miss out. Hit the bell, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be informed as soon as the next episode is available. Other than that, guys, keep in tune of me in my social media activity. Twitter is where I post most of my screenshots and teasers. Um, and jump into the Discord. There's a few people have joined recently into Discord, and uh, it's a nice way to communicate with people. You get even more teasers from me in there and you get to talk to me. So if you were interested in that as well, hit the um, link from the description below and I look forward to seeing you in there. But other than that guys, please do hang around because there's some sensational, sensational cinematics coming up and I will catch you all in the next episode. So thanks for watching guys and all the best.